lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So from such turn away for this sort are they which creep into houses and take captive silly women laden with sins, always learning, sir. That's really annoying. Oh, the word of God annoys you, sir, because you're not in Christ. Jesus Christ said, my sheep, he says, they, they, they hear me. I know them and they follow me. In that, in that same context, Christ said, but you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep, they hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Says my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Says I and my father are one. And they, they took up stones again to stone him. Jesus Christ said many good works. First Corinthians 6, 9, yes, for I condemn without Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. That's your daddy, sir. That's whom you, ha you hail, your daddy, Satan. And you know where Satan's going? The lake of fire. The lake of fire. The Lord prepared the lake of fire for the devil and the angels. According to Revelation, all those who worship are those who hail Satan and they take the mark of his name on their forehead or on their hand, the same will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. And they shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb of God. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Whoever worships the beast and his image and receives the mark on their forehead, on their hand. A certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no more room where to bestow all my fruits and my goods and he said this will I do you go to church sir, but you're, you're not saved by going to a building called church understand it my friend okay you, you the first thing you said is you go to a building called church my friend okay that's, your, that, that's in your heart right there. You're trusting in. How do you know that? Because Jesus Christ, the tree is known by its fruit. Why are you promoting venom rather than promoting the gospel? Why are you being a billboard? Why are you being a Why are you being a billboard for for the things of the world rather than for the gospel? That's what I'm asking. I'm not yelling. You're yelling. I got. I got. I'm using the megaphone. Okay, the Lord save your soul. Okay, trust in Christ. Not in your religious, not in your religious performance. The first thing they say is, "I go to church." What they mean is they go to a religious building called church. They're trusting in their attendance. They're trusting. They think that they're saved because they go to a religious building every week. Will you lie and steal, commit adultery and burn incense to Baal, and then come into a house that you call church and think that you're saved you know from your sin or you, you think you're saved you think you're, you're free to commit to continue to commit abominations you see this is the word of god okay to, to, to many people who, as such to them going to church is nothing but going is nothing but like going to a den of thieves where the thieves they think that they're saved because they, they're inside this this four wall structure called church but what is the church? According to the word of God, the Bible says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That is the church of Christ. The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation. That means that we're not trusting in what we did. We're trusting in Christ, who has died on the cross for my sins, who chose me, as the Bible says. 
And Jesus Christ said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus Christ said that the kingdom of heaven is like it unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went out to meet the brethren. Five of them were, were foolish, and five were wise, sir. So, do you think you, you think you deserve heaven, sir? No. No one deserves heaven. Are you gonna make it? No. Huh? Moses didn't make it. How I'm gonna gonna make it? Through Jesus Christ. Okay. I know Jesus told them he wasn't God, and everything he said. Sorry for these people. They don't know what they're doing. Moses made it. Okay. He's written halfway. He made it. I read it. I read, read the Bible. Read, read Hebrews. I, I will. Okay. Right, let's see. Okay. I, I'm reading to the beginning because I am. I read it when I was 20, 19. Okay. Now I'm 31. I'm learning by little yeah. by little. No one's following the rules. Yeah, Moses made it. Okay. Yeah, that's really yeah. right. Read, read the book of Hebrews, in chapter um, 11. Okay. Hey, I will know. I will have a priest. Follows Reset. all of it. He doesn't want us to follow the holidays. He doesn't want us to eat. The Follow same. Christ. Okay. Repent, believe on Jesus. God. Talk about Only God. Jesus can yeah. save you. Okay. Jesus Christ is God. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself with no reputation. He took upon himself the form of a servant, and he was made in likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, sir. The Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation, to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. This is how we know that judgment is upon America. For the wrath of God, okay, for the wrath of God, God's wrath, God's judgment is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. Keep preaching the gospel. Lord bless my friend, praise God. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. But outside of paradise, outside of the paradise of God are dogs. That is apostates. Okay? Apostate dogs. Okay? Those who are religious and yet they're not born again. They have not been regenerated. As a dog returns to his vomit, so the fool repeats his folly. Or as a sow, the pig that is washed in the mire, returns to the mud outside of the holy city jerusalem the new jerusalem are dogs and sorcerers and hormones and murderers and idolaters and all those who love and practice false religion but the cowardly and the unbelieving murderers the abominable sorcerers whoremongers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Repent, believe the gospel. Now is the acceptable time. Today, not tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of Adam is fully set in himself to do evil. Though a sinner commit evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it will be well with those who fear God, which fear before him, but it will not go well with the wicked. 
neither his days be prolonged, which are but, but a shadow. Why? Because he does not fear God. You know, I've heard that doctors, they prolong life. Not true. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord prolongs life. But the years of the wicked shall be cut short. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And knowledge, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is true discernment, true understanding. Seek the Lord, ladies while he may be found. Call upon him. But the Lord is near. I'm talking to you. Okay? Without Christ, you're condemned. The Bible says, hey, seek the Lord. Yes, you, ma'am. Okay? Seek Christ and live. Okay? Kiss the Son, Jesus, lest he be angry at you. And you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. In Jesus Christ, repent, seek the Lord, change your mind about the God you hate and about the sin that you dearly love. Flee to Christ, cry to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, have mercy on me, a wicked sinner. On this one, the Lord looks on, on him who is of a contrite and humble spirit and trembles at my word. The Bible says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your flippant laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. The Lord God, he is near to those who have broken hearts and he saves such as be of a contrite spirit. The Bible says about pride that there are six things that the Lord God hates, yea, seven, are an abomination, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devices wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to run into evil, a false witness that speaks lies, and all those who sow discord among the brethren. Christ spoke a parable to those who were trusting in themselves that they were righteous, that they were good, and they despised others. He said two men, they went, the temple to pray the one a pharisee and the other a publican a tax collector the pharisee stood and he prayed thus within himself saying god i thank you i am not like other men are extortioners unjust or adulterers or even as this tax collector he says i fast twice in a week and i give and i do this and i do that this man was full of, of himself. He was full of air. He was full of pride. He was trusting in his own goodness, in his own religious performance. He was looking down on others with his holier-thou uh, attitude. That's the Pharisee. That's the modern so-called Christian who thinks he's being saved by going to a building called church as he's trusting in his religious performance. Repent, believe on Christ, you know what about mockers, about mockers, okay? We were warned about the mockers in the last day who will mock the word of God, to mock the gospel. They hear the word. These are the same ones who hear the word, but it goes in one ear after the other. There is no mourning. There is no, there is no, head, there is no brokenness. These are the ones who receive the word with joy, with gladness. And they endure for a while. They believe for a time. Well, when persecution, affliction comes for the word's sake, by and by they're offended. They don't endure to the end as a true believer. And then there are those who hear the word among the thorns, that when they hear the word, the Bible says that the, that the cares of this life, the desires for riches, the desires for other things, they enter in and they choke the word, and there is no fruit for perfection. There is no fruit for God. There is no fruit of holiness, righteousness. There is no fruit to the Spirit. There are those who hear the word, praise God, with that fourth heart, that one, that remnant, that one who hears the word, and he is convicted of his sin. He is convicted of his sin. He feels the weight of the sin upon his soul. This is the one who is heavy laden. 
This is the one who hears the voice of Christ saying, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. This one who hears the word, he understands the gospel. It is granted unto him by the Lord, not only to believe in his name, but also to suffer for the sake of Christ. He understands the gospel, his condition, that he is, that he is wretched, that he is miserable, that he is blind and naked, that he is lost. And he cries to God with a godly sorrow, Lord, have mercy on me, a wicked sinner. Godly sorrow that works repentance, leading to salvation. This is the one, a true believer, the one out of the many, a remnant. Many are called, few chosen. Many are called, repent, believe the gospel, believe on Christ. But only very few are convicted. Very few respond towards God with true repentance. Repentance, repent and do works, meet for repentance. What do you think? If a man has two sons, and he goes to the first son and says, Son, today go work in my vineyard. And he says, I will not go, sir. But afterward, he repented. He changed his mind, and he changed his direction. He repented, and he went. That is repentance. And that he changed his mind, which resulted in a change of, of direction, of behavior, of attitude. The second man says, I go, sir. What happened? He didn't go. Which one of the two did with the Father? The first, they said, Jesus Christ, and verily, verily, I say to you, that the publicans and the harlots, they go into the kingdom of God before you, religious people. For John the Baptist came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the harlots and the publicans, they believed him. And after you had seen it, you repented not afterward, that you might believe in him. Repent. Many are called, you are chosen. The last shall be first, and the first last. Many that think are going to heaven are not going to heaven. You know why? Because no one deserves heaven. Our trust must be in Christ, in what he did, not what I have done. Salvation is a gift of the Lord. As the Bible says, we are saved by grace, through faith, and that out of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any of us should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You see, this is repentance. I have been saved by God's grace. Now by the grace of God, I am what I am. A new believer in Christ, walking in good works, not because of me, but because of the Spirit of Christ in me. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I but the grace of God, which was with me. Repent, cry out to the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me, a wicked sinner. Cry out to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me, a wicked sinner. Lord, have mercy on me, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned, and done evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak in blameless, when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin. Did my mother see? Behold, you desire truth in the inward part and in the hidden parts. You make me to know wisdom, purge me with wisdom, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones you have broken, may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with their free spirit. And then will I teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of blood, O God, 
the God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing a lot of your righteousness. And open down my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I will give it. The Lord does not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. The Lord God does not despise. But pride goes before destruction. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before the fall. Cry out the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. A sinner. On this one the Lord looks on. On him who is of a contrite and humble spirit. And trembles at his word. For thus saith the Lord, the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is true re revival. Many are called, few chosen, few broken at the feet of Christ. This is true revival. When a sinner when a sinner is smitten, when a sinner is broken at the feet of Christ, when a sinner falls prostrate on his face, giving Jesus Christ, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ said, we are ten men who were cleansed, but where are the nine? Are there not any that will return back and give glory to God? Except this one stranger. And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Arrepentido, primo. Arrepiéntase y ponga su fe en Cristo Jesús. Cristo, tu única esperanza. Di no al catolicismo. No a la atalaya. No al mormonismo. No a la religión. A la religión humana. Arrepiéntete. Busca al Señor. Pon tu fe en Cristo Jesús. No en María. No en Pedro. Ni Pablo ni Juan. Sino Cristo quien dijo, yo soy el camino. La verdad y la vida. Nadie viene al Padre si no es por mí, por Cristo Jesús. Gloria a Dios. Every tree, every professed Christian who does not bring forth good fruit worthy of repentance will be hewn down and cast into the fire. After death, sir, it's either heaven or hell. Only Christ can save us, sir. Lord bless you, my friend. Praise the Lord. All glory to God. Praise God. Jesus Christ, he died on the cross, he was buried, rose again, believe in Jesus Christ, believe on Jesus, repent, believe the gospel, and that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures, according to Isaiah 53, who has believed that report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord be revealed, for he shall go before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground, he has no form of calmness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty, though we shall desire him. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. Charm is the very deceitful, and outward beauty is fleeting. It is futile, it is vain. But a woman who fears God, a, a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruits of her own hands, and let her own works praise her in the gate. This is Proverbs 31, which speaks about the godly, virtuous, God-fearing woman. Who can find such a virtuous woman? It is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. As you look around, what do we see? What do we see? We see that women are rebellious, whose feet do not abide at home. They are there on the street corners looking, looking, for, looking to conquer, independent. They want to be successful. They want to climb the ladder of success. They don't want to submit to their husbands. They don't want to be homemakers. They're rebels. They are, they are in revolt against the word of God. Repent. Believe the gospel. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. Turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on you. And to our God who will abundantly pardon. Repent, seek Christ and live.